Russia's large-scale war against Ukraine has not made tanks obsolete, but it has forced their operations to act more cautiously. As The Telegraph writes, the front is filled with small drones. The threat from these drones, which can carry grenades or explosives, forces tank crews to hide and operate covertly in order to survive. Drones are crisscrossing the airspace, hunting high-value targets like armored vehicles and artillery, notes David Kirichenko for the Center for European Policy Analysis in Washington. This has led to significant changes in the way tanks are used. The new era of the cautious tank is very different from the old days when tanks could roam freely on the battlefield even during daylight hours. Back then, the main threats included mines, artillery, handheld anti-tank weapons and other tanks, but not drones. However, the latest drones have changed the game dramatically, as was evident with the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Russian tank columns attempting to break through to Kyiv were constantly monitored by Ukrainian drones, allowing artillery and anti-tank forces to effectively set up ambushes. By 2023, the situation was complicated by the advent of FPV drones, which can attack tanks from unprotected angles, from above or behind. Ukraine now produces about 3 million of these drones a year, and Russia is trying to keep up. Most tanks were designed to withstand attacks from the front or sides, but drones can strike from unpredictable directions. As a tanker named Bogdan noted, a $500 FPV drone can destroy a tank worth millions. FPV drones have become one of the main threats to tanks on both sides of the conflict. According to Oryx analysts, Russia has lost about 3,300 tanks during the war, which is equal to its pre-war stock. Ukraine has lost almost 900 tanks, which is also equal to its pre-war stock. Today, tanks are rarely used in massive attacks, as they were in the past, and their crews are more cautious than ever. Tanks operate from cover and use additional defenses to minimize the risks from drones. Although tanks have lost their former effectiveness, as tanker Viktor notes, they remain an important element on the battlefield. However, drones have forever changed the nature of tank warfare. The Kremlin managed to convince Russian society that the Ukrainian armed forces invasion of the Kursk region is something insignificant and does not matter at all. CNN writes about this. Despite Russia's increased efforts in recent days, Ukraine continues to control hundreds of square kilometers of Russian territory. The Russian offensive is mainly happening on the flanks of our bridgehead. They continue to try to advance, but their successes are gradual. Somewhere, they manage to take a street in a village. But this is happening in both directions. We are also counter-attacking and pushing them back, a Ukrainian battalion commander named Dmitry, who is fighting in Kursk, told CNN. According to experts, to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region, Russia deployed about 40,000 troops who were pulled in small numbers from different parts of the front. It's the equivalent of rummaging through the cushions of the sofa for loose change. Mark Galliotti, a senior fellow at the Royal United Service Institute, a UK think tank, told, as experts note, Russia is trying to avoid diverting any significant forces from the front lines in Ukraine to fight at Kursk. Although the Ukrainian invasion was initially a shock to both the government and ordinary Russians, the Kremlin has managed to downplay the significance of this event in the eyes of the people. The strategy is to distract the public from what has happened, which is obviously a big embarrassment, and to create the impression that it is not serious says John Law, a research fellow at the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House. Putin's government has described the Ukrainian armed forces offensive in the Kursk region as a raid and deliberately downplayed the status of its counterattack, calling it a counter-terrorist operation. Instead of focusing resources on liberating its own territory, the Russian military has expanded its offensive on several fronts in Ukraine, particularly in the key areas of Kharkiv, Donbass and Zaporizhia. It seems to be a very high priority for the Kremlin to push as far as possible in the Donbass, despite the losses. There is a window of sorts that is about to close because you are getting into this time of year when the roads are turning to mud. Law added. The Russian army is likely shelling Ukrainian positions in Donetsk with a 122mm D-74 gun, which was developed in the Soviet Union in the late 1940s, according to Business Insider. 
As the media outlet reports, what is interesting about this weapon is not its year of manufacture, but the fact that it comes from Soviet stockpiles. The D-74 was not supposed to be the arsenal of Russia, as the Soviet Union began exporting these guns to friendly countries like Vietnam and China after their production. It was previously thought that the USSR had given away all its stockpiled weapons at that time. Therefore, the use of D-74 by Russian forces on the front lines in Ukraine may indicate possible imports of these systems or at least ammunition for them from North Korea. The agency suggests that Russia may be attempting to demonstrate the availability of huge resources. Additionally, the use of Soviet-era equipment may indicate that despite a quicker-than-expected restructuring of the armed forces, new production in Russia is still lagging behind battlefield losses. The appearance of the D-74 at the front is far from a common occurrence. During the Soviet era, a small number of these guns were produced, mostly for the needs of allied countries, including locally under license. Between the 1960s and 1970s, almost all D-74s were removed from Soviet arsenals and transferred to the Middle East and Asia. In Europe, these guns were used to a limited extent by Warsaw Pact countries, including Hungary, Poland, Bulgaria and the former German Democratic Republic, but were decommissioned, according to Militani media outlet. In addition, D-74s were and still are actively used by the armies of the North Korea, Vietnam, China and Algeria. According to open sources, they are in the arsenals of Zimbabwe, Mauritania, Nigeria and Sudan and were in service in Iraq, Egypt and a number of other countries. These guns were most actively produced by the Chinese industry under the Type 60 index and the DPRK produces ammunition from them and even has two D-74-based self-propelled artillery systems, M1981 and M1991. Given these facts, it can be assumed that the Russians had literally a handful of D-74s left and decided to put them into service or they were transferred from the arsenals of their Russian partners.